Howdy guys, Cub here. Welcome to a quick showcase on how to build a working grill in Minecraft. So this is not meant to be something that is super fast, but it's meant to be more like a decorative thing that is also uh, a little bit functional, so you can actually use it. So, uh, yeah, let me show you what it looks like. So here it is right here. This is the grill. Uh, so we got, yeah, our grill right here. Uh, we got some plates on the side, uh, and it looks like, a, uh, like an outdoor grill that you might find uh, like in a backyard somewhere or something like that. Um, so, yeah, the way it works is you hit the button on the right to light the grill. There you go. And then you put your meat on. So I'll put my meat on here, put the meat on there. And then, of course, like any, uh, any grill, I guess, you have to wait until the meat is cooked. So we'll just wait here for a minute until the meat is cooked. Uh, by the way, this is basically equivalent to the uh, speed of two and a half furnaces here, in case you're wondering. So... Yeah, it, it is fast, but it's not meant to be like a super fast thing. It's more meant to be like a, like I said, a functional thing that is also uh, aesthetically pleasing. So, uh, yeah, you can see the meat popping off in there. And the meat is actually on the grill now, still cooking. You don't want to overcook it, right? Uh, and so to get the meat out of there uh, and into this chest, you just hit this button. There you go. And I picked some of it up, but the rest of it is in the chest right there. So... There you go, and then you can just relight the grill, and then do the same thing over and over again, and yeah, just hit this button to turn off the grill and get your meat off of it. Um, and so, yeah, this has a couple of somewhat interesting things. Uh, there's also like a storage of flint and steel, so you can just keep pulling flint and steels out. Uh, so, yeah, it basically uh, has unlimited lightability as long as you have a sufficient amount of flint and steel. Uh, and it's in this pretty compact area here. Uh, you can actually make this more compact. I just wanted to make like a nice little aesthetic uh, grill bit here. Uh, so, how do you build this? Let's head over here and I'll show you. So, this is it right here. This is all the functional aspects of it. So, basically, all you need to know is the right button. The right button, uh, you have a repeater right behind the block. That goes then up and powers two dispensers with flint and steel in them. So, this is the dispensers with flint and steel. And then directly on top of that, you have some uh, chests with some hoppers leading into it. And that's where you store your flint and steel in there. So that's all that is there. Then on the left side, all you need is a repeater on four ticks behind your leftmost button. Uh, observer is going to be observing that. And then that goes into uh, two dust here, into a block, and then into a repeater. And that goes into your dispensers with water buckets facing upward. Uh, into both of your campfires in the front. Uh, and then all you need is two hoppers facing into a chest, and that's pretty much it. So I'll show you here. Grill is on. Grill is off. And that's all there is to it. Then you can just, you know, decorate it and, you know, cover this up like so, and then, you know, bring this out here like this. And, yeah, you can, you can decorate it yourself, but that's basically all there is to it. So that is a quick little showcase on the grill. And now I want to sort of go into a couple of things about the automatic campfire, uh, which I'll provide a link to in the cards and in the description uh, right now on the screen. Um, so I want to show you guys basically how to design anything in Minecraft uh, using this campfire as an example. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. So what follows here is sort of a step-by-step -step detailing of how I designed the automatic campfire. Again, there'll be a link in the description and in the cards. Uh, so go and check out that video first if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say automatic campfire. Uh, there's a tutorial I have on the channel for this. Uh, without that context, it might be a little bit tough to understand sort of what we're working towards. Uh, so anyways, without further ado, let's jump into it. So before you start off building anything in Minecraft with redstone, you have to start off with an idea. And essentially my idea was that I wanted a campfire that would automatically turn on and off without the use of a button. So no buttons, no input from the player, it would just simply sit there and it would turn off during the day. So during the daytime it would be like this. Uh, so no fire in the campfire. And then during the nighttime it'd be on like this. And yeah, obviously I also knew that if we had water buckets in a dispenser, we can dispense those just like so. Uh, and then we can also pick it back up if where there's an empty bucket in the dispenser. And then I also knew that, you know, flint and steel in the dispenser, that'll set fire on the block uh, in front of it or light the, uh, the campfire uh, if you give the dispenser a redstone 
pulse. So those were the principles I was working with, and I thought it would be possible, so I decided to go ahead and go for it. So let's just go through all the different versions that I made and sort of how one led to the other. So first of all, we have the version one of the campfire. So this is it. This is actually a working campfire. It turns off during the daytime and turns on at night. Uh, but you can see there is one big flaw with this version, and that is that this, uh, this campfire is waterlogged during the daytime as well. So, um, yeah, I can sort of show you how this works. So if I just do time set 12,000, like so, actually let's do time set 12,400, and then we'll do, uh, game rule, do daylight cycle true to advance time. Whoop, daylight cycle true, get the E in there, there we go. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you'll see that this will pick up the water bucket here as this daylight sensor decreases in signal strength, and this one, the inverted one, increases. So, um, yeah, we should see this turn off, which will then pick this water up just as you saw right there. So the water is now picked up, and this inverted daylight sensor will eventually reach this point here, turning the fire on. But once we advance time to the morning time you'll see the problem with this first version. And the problem is that as this signal strength increases, as you just see here, uh, this will then basically put the uh, the water bucket into the, uh, the campfire, putting out the fire, but also leaving it waterlogged. So yeah, now we have a campfire that is waterlogged. It's out, but it's waterlogged. So obviously this version one, it's good, but we don't want to have a campfire that's waterlogged all the time, so that is the next problem that I had to solve. So I went ahead and solved it with the version 2, which you can see right over here. And so this version 2, uh, we basically compare the signal strength coming from a uh, regular daylight sensor to a inverted daylight sensor uh, on this side. And we do the same thing as well for this one right here, except this time we're feeding in the inverted output in the back and the regular into the side. Um, so, yeah, let me just show you how this one works. Uh, this one also has a critical advantage over the version 1, uh, which I will show you. So, if we go ahead and do time set 12,400. There we go. Okay, so now watch closely here. The sun is now setting. Uh, so, this version 2 has a couple of advantages. Number 1, you saw that pulse of water right there. That is critical, as that basically resets the entire... Um, the entire system, and yeah, now it lights at uh, at night here. But that pulse you saw just before it lit, um, that basically ensures that no matter what, like no matter if you leave uh, the chunks at, at the wrong time, like you, if I left now and returned during the day, for instance, uh, where this was already active, um, this will all, always automatically... Um, reset. It'll always automatically return to being on during the night and off during the day, which is critical and something that version 1 did not have, which just sort of came as a side benefit from having two daylight sensors here. Um, so yeah, that is that. And if I'll just do time set 23,000, let's do 23,300, let's say. So now I'll just show you that in the morning time, this version 2 does not have the problem as version 1 did, and as you can see, yeah, since we have this compare, uh, comparing, um, yeah, that basically then pulses the dispenser and it picks up the water. That's great, uh, however, we've now doubled the number of daylight sensors we use, so that is a bit of an issue. Um, so, that's the next thing we want to try and solve. We want to try and get a version that will basically have uh, only two daylight sensors instead of four. Um, so that's the next version that I made. So over here, if I get rid of this, right here, this is a version 3. So this basically has the same functionality as the version 2, except with only two daylight sensors, which is fantastic. So you use less resources. Uh, you can see it's not quite as uh, spread out and elongated. It's a little bit more of a compact space. And it's good. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, you can see it's uh, there's a water bucket in here, flint and steel in here, and it works exactly the same as the version 2. However, there's still some issues I have with this. Namely that we have the campfire, right? 
Campfire works. It's on during the day, off or it's off during the day, on during the night. But it's kind of ugly, right? There's these pressure plates we have to have here on the sides. There's uh, two dispensers on each side, so that covers it up on two sides. There's redstone on the same level. Uh, so basically, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, how can I improve this? And the obvious answer is hide as much as possible. So basically what that means is hide all the redstone and also hide at least one of the dispensers. So we could set up something like this where we have a dispenser here, dispenser here, and a campfire just like that. So yeah, this is what I'm now trying to go for, uh, for a version four. And so what did I do but just went ahead and made something like that that does exactly what I just said. So all the redstone is now hidden underground and on the surface up here we just have the one the one campfire here. And actually these these pressure plates aren't really necessary here but I put them there just because I wasn't 100% confident in the design initially. Um, but yeah, we have our dispenser here. This is the only thing that's visible here. Uh, the campfire, and then we have our two daylight sensors exposed to the sky here. However, um, I wasn't quite happy with this, so I thought about it, and I'm thinking, you know, we need to compact this a little bit more. So I made this version right here. So this is a more compact version of uh, this. However, there's still one big issue I needed to solve at this point before I was completely happy with the design. And that issue is, is basically... I thought about how players would use this in the world. Like if you want, if you wanted to build this in the world, how would people use this? And the most likely answer was like, they'd want something where they wouldn't have the possibility of covering up uh, the daylight sensors. So I figured, you know, if you were going to build this inside somewhere or like in like a structure, you'd have a wall like this. And for this small compact version, you have, one daylight sensor on the outside and then one on the inside, which is not ideal. And for this version, you would have your wall here, which could potentially, if you had it like this, would cover up both daylight sensors here, which would make for a bad time. Like this would not work at all if you had your wall like this. So obviously something better is needed. So I had to iterate again one more time and finally came up with something I was pretty happy with right here. So with this system here, uh, this system basically has only the dispenser, the uh, the campfire, and the two spots where you have your daylight sensors exposed to the sky. So I figured this was pretty good. You know, you can put your wall up here. You don't have to worry about, you know, if you're inside where your daylight sensors go. They're going to be on the outside, so you won't even see them. You can also use, like, for instance, like carpet to cover these up. So they're a little bit less visible as as well. Um, so that is pretty good to have something like that. Uh, and you can also, if you wanted to, you know, maybe use some, let's say, stone stairs, let's say. Uh, let's see, do I have stone slabs? Yeah, stone slabs and stone, let's see, stair. Yeah, stone stairs here. These. And you can make like a little like furnace oven campfire type thing. Just like that. So yeah, I thought that was pretty good. So I actually made a tutorial for this version right here. So this is pretty straightforward. And then once I had this final version, I could then easily expand it into other versions. Like for instance, the three wide one is pretty trivial if you can make the uh, the one wide one right there. So yeah, you get like nice little fire pit and stuff like that. And yeah, once I had this version, this, uh, this two uh, daylight sensor version, I thought to myself, you know, it should be possible to make this with just one daylight sensor. So I decided to go ahead and do that. So I made uh, a little bit of a jump here, but um, yeah, I basically tested it out and you can use this sort of method to uh, only get a signal when specific uh, power outputs are achieved from a redstone line. Uh, so yeah, that led me to make this right here. So this is the first version of an automatic campfire with a, um, with only one daylight sensor as the, uh, the input. So let me just show you how this works. So if I go time set, uh, let's see, 11,600, will that be enough? Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, we'll see this here. This has all the functionality of the other one, but only uses one daylight sensor for the input. Um, so 
as this uh, daylight sensor puts out less and less signal strength, we'll see that this uh, comparator will change state, which will then pulse a water to clear the fire, just in case, again, you leave during the wrong time. This basically resets it and makes sure that this thing can never break. Uh, so we should see that momentarily. So this redstone will go off. The water pulses and clears the campfire. And the next thing that's going to happen is this redstone dust will go off, which will allow the signal to go through here and pulse this dispenser, which will light the fire, which you just saw right there. And then, yeah, basically this continues to decrease the signal strength. Nothing else happens throughout the remainder of the night. So this thing is now lit. Uh, and then as we progress through the night, uh, let me just go ahead and do time set 23,000, like so. So we're now in the morning time. So the sun is now coming up. This is now increasing in signal strength. So you'll see here that this will actually pulse this dispenser again. You'll see its durability is now 36. But as this gets pulsed, you'll see it actually does not take durability damage. So we don't actually care that there's a second pulse that comes through here during the, uh, during the morning time. So yeah, that is sort of an irrelevant pulse there. Just gets, gets you a little bit extra sound, I guess. But that didn't really concern me that much. Uh, because this uses so fewer resources compared to the other two, uh, two version, the two daylight sensor version. And then finally, once this signal strength becomes great enough, yeah, you saw what it does. Pulses this and picks up the water bucket yet again. So we now have a functional version of a one wide, or sorry, not one wide, a one daylight sensor uh, automatic campfire. So this now works. We does everything we wanted to do, and now we're basically in the same situation we were. Um, in the version 3 with needing to basically hide all of the redstone. So we need to hide, basically now hide all the redstone and uh, at least one of the dispensers here. So that's what I did. So over here we have the final version of the uh, one daylight sensor, one daylight detector um, automatic campfire. So this thing uses only one daylight sensor, uh, very little redstone, in fact, down here. Uh, but it is essentially the same as that, just compacted and uh, miniaturized. Um, so, yeah, this is actually the version I showed in the tutorial. Um, and this thing will turn on during the nighttime, turn off during the daytime, and there leaves no water behind, obviously. So if I do time set 11,500, we can just watch this progress here. And I'll show you that it works. So this thing, I think, yeah, actually, it actually lights a little bit earlier than some of the other ones, just because that's how I wanted to set it up. There's the pulse that clears it. So that actually makes it sure that it resets itself if you leave during the wrong moment and then re-enter the chunks at a later time. There's the lighting of the fire at night. So it's now lit. It lights, like I said, just before some of the other ones do. So now, once again, we're in the morning time. You can see we're about ready to turn off the fire because it's now daytime. So any moment now, we should see the water pulse yet again and turn out the fire and then pick the water back up. So there we go. Yeah, so that is the uh, last iteration that I did for the automatic campfire designs. And again, this is in the tutorials if you want to know how to build this exactly, but it's pretty straightforward from this, uh, <laughs> from this video, I think. Uh, and yeah, so... Now that we have that, um, yeah, that's basically where I sort of stopped, but um, there is, for those of you guys who are some redstone masters out there, a way to make sort of the ultimate uh, automatic campfire, which would be something where you have a dispenser here, campfire on top, and then this uh, turns on and off automatically by itself, no dispenser visible. Um, I've seen some versions like this with a button where you can switch between it, but um, nobody has made an automatic one yet, actually, uh, because it's significantly more of a challenge than just having a manual one. Um, so the way you would do this, if you wanted to try and go for the automatic one, which is going to take a lot more redstone than just this, I guarantee. Um, but the way you do that, I sort of have a roadmap here. Uh, the first version you would make would be one that sorts out uh, your water bucket and your flint and steel. Uh, f sorting flint and steel from other items is pretty easy, as is sorting water buckets. Uh, I'll provide a link to a sorting video I did a while back on exactly how you can do that uh, on the screen now. So that's the first version. Sort out your flint and steel from your water buckets. Uh, the second version, uh, the version 6, I guess, is what I'm calling this, would be a 1x3 version 
of an automatic campfire, which would have a layout similar to this type of thing up here. So you basically have some dropper vaders uh, leading into a dispenser on top. And so basically you'd have like, presumably this hopper line would lead down to where you sort your flint and steel uh, and your water bucket. And then based on the time of day from your daylight sensor, you would send uh, either the flint and steel or the water bucket up uh, one of these droppers. You would pulse it twice once it got into the dispenser and then you would unlock the hopper or potentially a hopper minecart, depending on how you did it, uh, and send it back to the sorter to be sorted once it did its thing up here. Um, so that's how you would do the version 6, and then the version 7 would be actually, um, yeah, getting rid of at least one of these dropper elevators here, uh, and possibly, yeah, putting the dropper underneath, and then using a hopper minecart to then pull the item out of the dispenser, um once it had pulsed and done its thing up here at the campfire. So then you would have just a straight up, like at the at the surface visible, a straight up dispenser here and a campfire there. And that would be the entire thing. No button press or pressure plate or anything necessary. It would just light itself and then put itself out uh, depending on if it was day or night. So that would be the ultimate version. Um, but yeah, I thought this was good enough. Like I'm not really too concerned about having one dispenser uh, visible uh, from this thing so that's where I sort of left off but hopefully somebody will uh, pick up the mantle and uh, run with it basically so guys that is basically the design process so it's basically start off with an idea make a totally trash terrible version of your first uh, initial idea then on the second pass through uh, improve on the first version eliminate the problems with the first version even if it might become bigger at some point uh, then on the next version after that uh, take that concept and make it smaller, make it use less resources, make it more compact. Then take that version and basically hide everything. So you hide stuff uh, and uh, make it more compact still if possible. Uh, and then you start to nitpick a little bit. And you have to think about how people will actually use this in the world and what would be the most useful way to arrange the, uh, the redstone and... Yeah, how, how it would be like built, how it would be used in actuality. And then once you have that, which is what this version is right here, uh, by that time, you probably have learned enough to know that this is not the most efficient way to do things. <laughs> so you, then you basically um, go back a step to a version like this, where you use even fewer resources than that. Um, and yeah, it, it basically is like a quick way to throw together a new concept so you're basically cutting in at version 3 over there uh, and then once you have this working you can then basically do the same thing just hide everything compact it and make it more resource efficient which is what this is right back here so that that's basically how you design anything in Minecraft uh, pretty simple uh, sort of pathway to follow but uh, it does take some time but hopefully this helps you guys in learning sort of how to design things and how to iterate on things to make something that uh, is better than you could have imagined at first. Um, like this was nowhere near what <laughs> the first version was over here. But uh, yeah, this sort of process got me there in the end. So anyways, guys, uh, I think that's going to be it for me today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, thanks again for watching, guys. This has been Cub. Goodbye.